All right, so we've talked about the why of object-oriented programming in terms of time and space, and we've talked about the space element of it, right? Meaning that physically we can't have more than one person crowded around uh, a keyboard, right? It would be very confusing. And so to be able to get multiple people to work on the same program, then we break uh, the program out into object-oriented programming where everybody takes an object, builds it, they all tie together in order to make the game run just like we demonstrated. So in Spencer's dumb game this still works but it's using the dice class in order to work. Okay, So we build an instance of the D or uh, called D of, of the dice class and then we're using that, we're passing it the number two to represent the role of two dice and we're getting the outcome that we got back when it was this all-in-one, what we refer to as procedural program. Okay, So then this one goes away. This is a much cleaner way of, of writing this code, even though it, if we look at it, in fact, let me pull that back up. So the Monopoly class closed at one second too soon. If we look at the line numbers, it goes down to 44 lines of code, right? If I look at line numbers on Spencer's Dumb Game, then that's 36 plus the line numbers on the dice. Uh, 21, so 36 plus 21 is 57 minus 44 is 13, right? Was it 44? Yeah. So the, we increased the number of lines of code by 13. So the program's bigger. It maybe took a little longer to do it this way uh, in, in taking into account the time that it took for each individual to write their part and adding them together. But this is a much cleaner, better way of doing it. And more than that, this is the way we do it in the real world. This is the way it's done, object-oriented program. Very few people write procedural programs anymore. This is kind of the, the way of doing it in, the, in real world programming. So that's the, the time element that we talked about. Or sorry, the space element that we talked about. The time element has to do with this. I've now written this little dice simulator program that takes two dice and returns a number. The question is, how many programs out there, how many games out there, use the role of two dice? And the answer is, tons of them, right? And so, just in, instead of playing my little dumb game where I roll a 7 or 11, one game that my little brother likes a lot is a game called Settlers of Catan. Catan? Catan. Catan? East Coast, West Coast thing? I don't know. But let's say we're writing, we just set out, we've been hired to write the Settlers of Catan board, uh, computer version of the board game. All right, so now I'm going to start out by public static void main string args. And the very first thing I want to do is uh, get a total of a roll so that the player can move or, or take their turn um, depending on what they roll, right? Well, the amazing thing is I say, wait a second, I already wrote a dice program, so I don't even need to do that code anymore. All I need to do is import the dice program and call it. So I'll say total equals d dot roll dice. And the number I want to roll is 2. And I guess I had to print something out or I won't know what this program's done. So system.out.println um, print out the total. So we'll save this. I'll compile and run it. And the program works. I got a 5, and there's a 7, and there's a 10, 4, 7, 8, 10, 8, 10, 6, 4, 6, 7, 8. 
and, and so on and so forth. I'm rolling these two dice and I'm getting back a total. Well, what just happened? This is a new time and a new program. And it turns out that I needed that exact same functionality that I needed in the previous program that I wrote. And it's there. It's written. What did I just end up doing with my overall productivity? Well, I ended up saving time in the long run by taking and breaking it out into an object. Because now I don't need to reuse this, you know, rewrite that code in the same, um, in two different uh, classes, two different programs. I wrote it one time and now I can reuse it for forever. I can write this really slick dice roll program and I can improve on this dice roll program and get it all set up so I can roll one dice or multiple dice and maybe I want to get, instead of getting the the total, maybe I want to get the numbers that were rolled, like in a game of Yahtzee or something. Um, and I could build this really slick dice class and then I could take that dice class and whatever game I wrote in the future that needed dice, it's already been done one time. And I can use it forever. It's good for time. And so this little uh, you know, catchphrase that my uh, dad uses of time and space representing the reasons we use object-oriented programming, this time element, I mean, it, 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 we can use this forever. It's reusable code, right? And so those are the two main reasons that we pro program in an object-oriented manner. Um, you end up, like I said, in your, even in your own program, even if you're working by yourself, you end up saving a lot of time by, by uh, compartmentalizing this stuff. We refer to it in the, in the programming world as encapsulation. We take and encapsulate this dice so that it's its own self-contained little thing. It doesn't need anything from anybody except for when the method's called, we, we've instructed what we need the user to pass in or the calling class to pass in. But it, it's self-contained. It's its own little thing, right? Same with uh, the this new Settlers game. It's self-contained. It's its own class. And I'm going to tie it together with another class using this call. But other than that, it doesn't need that class to exist. Um, and that's probably not a good, most of the time the, the main method is going to be tied to other classes. But the other classes are not, the dice method is not tied to the main class. It's its own thing. And so we can put this out in our library and we can reuse it. And, and uh, this is the reason we do object-oriented programming and why it's so important. Um, it really does end up saving time in the long run. It's a lot cleaner way of doing it. We can work in teams. And so it's going to feel kind of weird maybe at first, but it's really not that that weird. If I go into my Settlers game, I'll put a stop on this uh, line right here, and then I'll run this in debug mode, and we just watch what happens. Now in the debug mode, there's a step down, which will not step into the selected class that's being called, but we want to step into it because we want to see what's going on in the detail. So when it hits this line, it's going to jump to my dice class as soon as I press this button. And now it's jumped to the, the instance of the dice class. It creates the random number, it sets that variable up, and then it rolls the dice twice because that's the number of uh, dice that I've submitted to it and then it's going to exit and return that total which is now stored in my total variable here that just changed after I got done executing that line it was set to a 9 and then we print out the result these two classes have worked together I, uh, I talk about it in terms of uh, another example I use is in terms of Voltron when I was a kid I loved uh, watching the cartoon Voltron which is now out on Netflix and there's multiple versions of it I didn't know any of this but they had these, they were like these little, uh, I guess it was machines, I can't even remember, I need to watch it again. But they would f come together 
their individual uh, robots come together to form one giant robot to uh, fight whatever bad guy there is. Well, that's all we're doing with object-oriented programming. Everybody creates their individual part. We stack them all together and tie them in, and then the program works because everybody completed their individual part based on what they said they were going to do. Okay, I told it. I told you. I told it. <laughs> My English teacher would be so proud. I told you that I needed you to create a dice program w with a method called roll dice that would pass in a number of dice and pass out or return uh, an integer that represented the total. And then I went on my merry way and wrote my little program. When your program's done, we just plug it in and it works. Um, not really. In real life, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't go quite that smoothly most of the time. But if we follow the contract that we make with each other, the, the, the kind of the instructions for each other, then it does do that. It, it fits really well together. So hopefully that's um, a good explanation of why we use object-oriented programming. There's kind of one other element to it that I'll talk about in the next video, but, but in my mind that's kind of a separate thing that is that also makes object-oriented programming useful. Okay? Alright. Spencer out.